Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. And I'm happy to have some time to record again. It's been kind of chaotic around my house. And so uh, it's nice to slow down and share a fun pattern that I found. This came from a Pinterest post that I saw, and the blog was from Marie English, and she is a CZT. And I didn't find a step out, but I did figure out on my own how to do that. And I think it, it was fun for me. Um, the first thing that I did was that I found a template, just did a search on the internet. This one happened to come from this website, if you can see it. But all I did was search for a five-pointed star template and came up with this. This one is about four and a quarter inches across from here to here. Um, here's an example that I did. And this is an apprentice tile. And it fits really well in here. So you know, pick the size tile that you want to use. I am actually going to do this on a five by seven piece of cardstock that I can use for a Christmas card. So this pattern does not have a name. And so I'm just gonna do it and show you how I figured it out. The pattern that's here on the outside is called Bouffant by Joanna Quincy, a very sweet CZT and friend. I really like her work. <clears throat> She's been a good mentor for me also. And so uh, the first thing that I do, well, let me show you also uh, with this template, my star, okay. So I just lay it down and do uh, an outline around it. But I just wanna show you that there are different things that you can do with that star template. So you can just make a swirl that comes to the center or this and then fill in each one. Lots of things that you can do, but I'm gonna show you how to do this one. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm just gonna decide where I want this. And the image that I saw on Pinterest, they showed little Christmas balls hanging down. You could do something like that also. Okay, so I'm just gonna lightly go around the edge of this star, doing my best to keep it in place. And I'm gonna go over this in ink, but I want to start with a pencil outline. And I'm not worried about it being perfect, Oop. but I can't draw a star freehand. So it's best for me to use a template. Um, I also have some plastic templates, but I didn't have one that was the right size. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to a Micron PN. So I'm gonna use a PN and a uh, Micron 01, a graphite pencil, and a blending stump. And of course you could do this in color. And this does take a little bit of time just because it's got a lot in each of these, but um, I will try not to go too terribly slow. So this is the second week in December. 
And there's a lot going on. And I thought this would be a good way to relax. I was really attracted to this pattern and it uh, took me a little bit to deconstruct it for myself and figure out how to do them. But when I am doing this star, to me, it's just so relaxing. I just really enjoy it. I usually put on a audio book and listen and then just relax. Now, what I did in these others was try to find the center. Um, you could make lines that go across, you know, here to try to guess where the center is, but I'm just gonna, okay, here's the top. I'm just gonna put a circle in here and, with pencil and see if it looks right. You can use your pencil to kind of measure and see if it's close to being in the center. Eh, a little bit off here. Okay, so I think that's going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that in. So we've done our star. I'm sorry, I want to use my micron. You can make this as big or as small as you would like. As you can see on these two, they're a little bit different and you still get the same effect. So now I'm going to do my circle. You can easily turn this into a gemstone. Okay, so I'm going to show you in pencil first how we're going to connect these. We just want to have this come around and then just gently curve into your circle in the center. And I'm going to do it in pencil so that I can be sure that I like it. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink it in. If you do a Google search for Zentangle Star, you get some really cool ideas. Okay, so once you have this basic star and these curves that meet down to the center, the rest of it's gonna be exactly the same in each one of these. And all I'm gonna do is make these petals and keep curving them toward the center. And you could, if you wanted to, do straight lines and fill it in. But I prefer to just draw a petal and have it come right back down to that point. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that. Just keep turning it, adding a new petal. And mine won't always be exactly the same width, and that's okay. 
These are looking fairly even for a change. As you get more into this curve, then it's okay to stop there. And then that's gonna be my last petal. And then we're gonna come back and fill in the edge. And this is probably what's going to take the most time. The first one I did was on a piece of paper that was already colored. It was the apprentice tile that already had the color put on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we're gonna do this exact same thing in each one of these. So just do your petal and keep moving down. I do it a lot slower than this when I'm listening or uh, to a book or listening to music. I have some favorite meditative playlists. Okay, I'm just going to keep going with this. I made that one a little fatter than the others, but it doesn't matter. Okay, move to the next one. So I am in the Houston, Galveston, Texas area. And we're still having fairly warm weather. We're in the 60s this week. I know some people are getting snow. I, I don't like being cold, so I'm happy to be warm. Oops, that one didn't look right. Okay. Just kind of smooth that out. Okay. That's better. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little one here. Again, each one of these doesn't have to match perfectly. Mine never do. In one of the audiobooks that I was reading or listening to recently, uh, I wrote down what the guy said and really. <clears throat> Um, made me think about Zentangle, and uh, the author was Matthew McConaughey in his book Green Lights. And anyway, the one thing that I really liked was he said, "We focus on the outcome instead of the activity, and we miss the doing of the deed." You know. If we worry too much when we're doing Zentangle about how it's gonna look in the end, then you've forgotten the beauty 
of the Zentangle method. And that is how it helps you to relax and just be in the moment. Don't worry about how things are going to turn out. Just relax and enjoy one stroke at a time. Okay. So the next thing will be to fill these in. And I might fast forward so that you don't have to watch. The other thing that I'm going to do is do a little bit of hatching right here at the bottom where all of these meet. So when you get to that point, you can uh, add the hatching. So again, we're filling in at the top of these petals. and where it comes around at the center. And then for each of these, we're going to add a little bit of hatching. Okay. I just really like the drama that it adds <laughs> in something like this. Okay, hopefully it's not taking too long. I've enjoyed doing things like this. And before I color them, uh, I've started taking uh, a photo or scan it. And I want to make a coloring book for my family, especially my grandkids. They're already doing it on uh, just cardstock copies that I've made, but I'm really enjoying that. It gives me a, a goal for a fun way to use my Zentangle. I've done two feathers and this star. And I've done some things in the past that uh, I could print in my coloring book. It's just a possibility, just something to focus on. Getting there. I love hatching. And you can use this opportunity to round these tips if they didn't turn out just the way you wanted them to. That's the nice thing about filling in is you can adjust things as needed. And I think this little star would look really pretty in uh, different colors of watercolor. I think the one that I saw, and I'm gonna to try to remember to put the link in the description, um, hers was kind of gold, yellowish gold.
And I'll probably come back and make sure all of these are filled in. Okay, so there we have the star and one more place for hatching. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is put an aura all the way around. And of course, that's optional, but if you watch Rick and Maria very often, Maria especially likes to put an aura around a main pattern before she adds another pattern to it. And I do better when I have whatever I need to aura is on this side and my pen is on this side so I can see that line and try to keep it even all the way around. All right, there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is this pattern here that's called Bouffant by Joanna Quincy. And she does have a tutorial on YouTube for this. And basically, we're just going to start with an orb. And then we're going to put like a teardrop, kind of a flex shape here. Okay. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. Okay. So we started with that orb and that petal. And then we're just going to go to that top of that petal, make another one. And we're going to come down right where that one ended and started. So we're gonna keep coming back to that same point for as long as we can. Adding another petal. And still come back around like that. And then we're just gonna fill that part in. So if you had any space, Left over, we're going to fill that in. Okay, so let's do another one. Again, we're going to start with kind of a teardrop shape. And then just keep bringing our petals back around to that original starting point. As much as you can. And then fill this in. Okay. And again, you could put anything here. You could make this more Christmassy. But I don't think I have taught this pattern and it's one of my favorites. I wanted to use it. Uh, 
another one. You can also use these as a filler with a lot of, you can put another one up here. So for instance, if you wanted to fill in a space, you can put another one here and just keep going. You could do a ribbon similar to what I have here. And if you watch Joanna's video, she shows you how she does it. I watched that video again this morning just to remember how she taught it. All right. And I really liked how this one looked with a double aura. So I'm going to do that. One more time. And you could make these flowers into different colors. And I'm going to put a little bit of hatching on each of these petals. That kind of makes it match down here. Okay. Aura again. Hatching. Hope you are having a good holiday season or whatever it is that you celebrate. If you do a card similar to this, um, you would have plenty of room to add a greeting or more patterns around it. I am only going to show this star with Buffont. Well, that one got kind of weird, didn't it? <laughs> Okay, one more. And I do remember I did not put hatching in each one of those. So I'll go back and do that. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Hatching. And in these places where we've added the hatching, that's going to be a good place to add shading or color. I watched a recent video by Melinda Barlow. Her site is called Inky Doodles. And she did a pattern, and then she was showing how to use either odorless 
mineral spirits or I think odorless paint thinner is what she had. And people were concerned because of the odor and she showed how you could also use mineral oil or baby oil that you would put your color in here and then use the either the mineral oil or the odorless paint thinner to spread it out. Now, I'm not gonna do that on this, but um, that would be a good video. Okay, so again, this is a card that is five inches by seven inches. And I'll probably just put a message on here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this one for um, Christmas or not. But uh, after I photograph it, I will probably add some color. You could put a gemstone in here and uh, really do a lot with it. Again, add other patterns around here as you would like. All right. And here's that quote. We focus on the outcome of the activity and we miss the doing of the deed. I hope that you will focus on your Zentangle art. Don't worry about the outcome. Just enjoy doing it one line at a time. Uh, happy holidays to you guys again, to all of you. And um, hopefully I'll do another video soon. Thanks for joining me again. And I'll see you next time. Bye.